Hello, this is Dr. Mark Rosen again, and this lecture is entitled Test Your Ultrasonography Skills. The importance of this lecture is to illustrate how ultrasounds can be used for clinical decision making. We're going to look at one particular case and see how using the use of the ultrasound can influence your decision making. Now please be aware that there are many different ways to approach what is considered a complex case here. And by no means am I saying that this is the only way to approach the case. Again, the purpose is to show how an ultrasound, or in this case, more than one ultrasound, can influence clinical decision making. So we'll start off with the beginning of the case. This is a 64-year-old male, septic from a urinary tract infection, who has DIC and became short of breath, requiring intubation. His baseline chest X-ray and EKG were normal. His vital signs are remarkable for hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, and being febrile at 38 degrees. He's sedated from medications and in no acute distress. His lungs are remarkable for bibasilar crackles. His heart has a systolic ejection murmur. His abdomen has decreased bowel sounds and is non-tender, bearing in mind, however, that he is sedated from medications, making the exam somewhat difficult. Extremities are within normal limits. And likewise for his neurological exam, there's no focal deficits, but he is very sedated from medications, and again, the complete exam is somewhat difficult. The following tests were ordered. A chest x-ray was ordered, was performed on a stat basis, and showed moderate congestive heart failure. An EKG was ordered, and as soon as the EKG tech came to perform it, the patient was on the way to the CT angio, and it was felt that that should be given priority. So the EKG is still pending. The patient did come back, and the CT angio was negative for pulmonary embolism. Once he arrived back, ABGs, CBC, BMP, blood cultures, INR, PTT were drawn and are all pending. While waiting for the labs to return, and for a fluid challenge to complete in view of his hypotension, you performed some tests with bedside ultrasonography. This is one part of the ultrasound. Take a look at it, and we'll come back to it later. But realize this is a sub or subcostal view of the heart. Left atrium, blood going through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, being pumped out into the aorta through the aortic valve, and up here is the right ventricle. We'll come back to this. As an additional part of your ultrasonographic assessment, there was another ultrasound performed, and this one of the abdomen. And again, take a look at this, and we'll review this in short order as well. Now again, to emphasize, there are many approaches to this case. But based on your ultrasound, what findings might change how you proceed? Again, this doesn't mean that we proceed definitively in this fashion, but this is to illustrate how an ultrasound can change your clinical judgment as to what is exactly going on in this case. Let's review this ultrasound of the heart. What view is this and what's remarkable here? Again, this is a sub view. And what's remarkable here is the mitral valve. Take a close look at that mitral valve and look at the excursion of it. There is something called the EPSS. The definition is that the EPSS is the E point of the mitral valve to ventricular septal separation. Let's simplify that a little bit. The E stands for early ventricular filling via the mitral valve when the mitral valve is wide open. In other words, it's the space between the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve and the septum. Normally, the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve should almost slap the septum, and there should be very little space. In fact, the distance between the mitral valve and the septum, the EPSS, should be less than one centimeter. If it's greater than two centimeters, for example, 
the ejection fraction is considered to be less than 30 percent. Now what's the EPSS here? Well, let's take a look at the mitral valve. The image is now frozen and the mitral valve is sitting over here. On the scale over here to the right, going from the top of the screen down to the bottom, the scale is set so the depth is 16 centimeters. Each hatch mark from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, and so forth, represents one centimeter. So this yellow bar is showing a two centimeter separation. In other words, if this separation between the anterior leaflet and the septum is greater than this, the ejection fraction is less than 30 percent. The EPSS is definitely greater than 2. Therefore, the ejection fraction is definitely less than 30 percent. Now we're seeing part of a FAST scan. The liver is noted to be more anterior. The right kidney is at the tip of this arrow, and then Morrison's pouch is the space in between. Now this is a potential space, and there should never be an anechoic area which would represent fluid. But yet there is at the tip of the fat arrow. That's free fluid. It doesn't belong there. The CBC revealed a profound anemia. So medical decisions were made with these assumptions. This patient did not have a pulmonary embolism as shown by the CT angio. The new onset of CHF could be, could be quantified with an ejection fraction that was significantly decreased at less than 30%. The anemia was probably from an intra-abdominal bleed. The FAST scan showed free fluid and the patient had a very significant anemia. The bleed might very well be from his DIC. And lastly, the CHF possibly could be due to ischemia from the acute bleed. Obviously, this would change your clinical management, whether to call surgery for the abdominal bleed, how much fluid to give, whether you wanted to give inotropes. Many decisions could be made based upon this ultrasound, based upon both ultrasounds. So see the next presentation of Test Your Ultrasonography Skills to assess your ability to interpret and utilize bedside point-of-care ultrasounds, or see one of the vignettes that we've prepared for you. I hope this was useful in allowing you to see the beneficial effects of bedside ultrasonography. Thank you.